Today we will do force and laws of motion. Basically what is force? Force is a push or a pull that has various effects. Some of them include it can change the shape or the size of an object. Secondly, it can change the state of the motion of an object, the state of motion or the state of rest. So basically the state of motion includes the object being at rest and at motion. So now third point, it can increase or decrease the magnitude or the velocity of the object. Basically the magnitude or the velocity just means speed. And the last point, the force can, can change or it has the capability of changing the direction of the object. So when the object is moving, the force can change the direction of the object. So note that these four points, that, that some of them may happen, some of them may not. The, the force can only, the force can make them happen but it may, they may or may not. Basically some may, while some may not. It totally depends. Example that when we roll a piece of clay, it will change its shape to meet our required desires and so that is proof that force can change the shape and the size of the object. The clay can thicken and really change its shape according to our application of force. And now we have done the definition, it can come as a 5 marker in the exam, 1 for the definition and, one, and 4 for the points. Basically it is the foundation on which the whole chapter is built on. And now balanced and unbalanced forces. So to understand them, first we will do an activity. On a table, keep a block. It can be a wooden block or made of any material and tie two strings directly opposite to the block. So like this, take a block and tie two strings on the two opposite sides of the block and name the forces that are acting on the string that, that we are pulling the strings with. Basically the forces is the strings that are exerting on the block. Name them x and y. So x for the this string and y for this force on string. So let's consider three cases. The first one when the force when the x is bigger than y. When the force of x is greater than the force exerted by y. So basically this means that two different forces are acting or different magnitudes. So what will this mean? It will mean that the net force, the, the total force acting which is x minus y, it is towards the west side, the side on which x is pulling at. And the second case, so in the, so in the first case the box, the block will move towards the left side, the x side. It will move, movement will happen. So basically in this the box was at rest and due to force this point occurred. The state of rest was changed into state of motion. And secondly, when y is greater than x, it will mean that the net force is towards east, the y side. So the force is, exer is, is exerting more on the y side and thus the motion of the block will be towards the y side. So the box will move towards the y side. And thirdly, the last case, when the x is equal to y, this will mean that the net force is equal, say so x and y equal and thus the object will not move at all. The block will remain stationary and will remain at the state it is currently, which is the state of rest. And note, and note that these are all considering that there are no external forces acting, only x and y are acting. Okay. Now, now that done that, now we will come to unbalanced and balanced forces. So basically, now that we have done an activity, we know the practical applications of balanced and unbalanced forces. Now we will do the definitions. So now let's relate the activity to the definitions. So basically, in the first two cases, when the object uh, was resulting in motion, then we say that the forces were unbalanced 
and when the object did not move at all, when they cancelled out each other, then the forces are balanced. And now, the definition. Basically, when sum of all the forces are not zero, then we say that unbalanced forces occur. They also change the state of motion or the, 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 or the direction of objects. So basically, they can move an object at rest or they can make a object at rest move. And also, they might change the direction of the object. It totally depends on the situation or circumstance. And lastly, the net force, which means that the, all the forces acting and the result of that is zero. Basically, it's not zero. When the net force is not zero, it's unbalanced forces. This is a sign for not zero. This is very. This is the goal on which this topic is built on. Now and now we come to balanced forces. So when the sum of all individual forces is zero, then balanced forces occur. They do not change the state of motion of object, nor the nor the direction. Or anything. Basically, balanced forces mean that their net force is zero. So, there is no the the forces will not have any effect since their net force is zero. And now, since we know that motion occurs because of a force acting on the object, we can say that there will be no change in motion. So, the velocity will remain constant, whether it is zero or whether it is some other number. It will remain constant as it is. And now, since velocity is constant, and we know that acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity by t by time, so we can say since the velocity is constant, the acceleration will also be zero. And the simple explanation of that will be acceleration is equal to v by u by t, v minus u by t, which is equal to since they do not change since the velocity will be constant. It will be zero by t since it is zero, obviously. So v is equal to constant. And with it, the acceleration is also equal to constant. So this was just for explaining. And and now we move on to the next topic: Newton's first law of motion. Basically, Newton gave three laws of motion, of which one or two we will be studying today, and the rest in the next class. So, the first law of motion states that an object resists a change in its state of motion or rest. State of motion basically means the state of motion or the state of rest. It consists of that. So, the Newton's first law of motion states that that an object resists a change in its state of motion unless an external force is applied. So basically, it's also known as the law of inertia, since the tendency of the object to resist a change in the state of motion is known as inertia. So it's the law of inertia. So, so basically, an object will always tend to remain in a state of motion. Will continue to remain in a state of motion unless an external force is applied, which is greater than the inertia. And this is the qualitative definition of force. So this really defines by quality and not quantity. Since we can't measure exactly the inertia, we can just measure the force. So also the law of inertia, also known as law of inertia. So basically, to give some examples, so when we are sitting in a bus. And it starts suddenly from rest. So basically, the bus is at rest; it is not moving, and then it moves with a sudden jerk. So when it moves, we fall backwards. And why is that? It is because. Wait a second. Falling backwards. On sudden start of bus. So this is because of the inertia. Since it acts, since we are already at rest, 
since our since we the person already t at rest so when the bus moves our body resists that change and thus we fall backwards so before elaborating on that let's do the types of inertia first so basically inertia inertia is of three types and those types are inertia of rest inertia of motion and inertia of direction inertia so inertia of motion so motion inertia of direction inertia of rest and so these are the three types of inertia basically when i was giving the example of the person falling backwards when the bus suddenly starts it was of the inertia of rest since the person is already at rest and the bus starts suddenly the person the person's body in fact has the tendency to resist that change in state and thus fall back falls backwards because it is resisting that movement of the bus so example will be person falling backwards on the sudden start of bus and quite in, quite in contrast to this an example of inertia of motion is that person falling in front when the bus suddenly stops so imagine a situation you're traveling on a bus and the bus is moving so the bus suddenly stops and you fall front falls in the front this is because of the inertia of motion your body was moving and the bus stopped so it will resist that action it will it will resist that the bus has stopped it will resist the change of state so by, by only by res resisting will it move forwards basically it will fall forwards this was it and the inertia direction will to require many things so basically what does inertia direction means inertia direction means that an object is moving in a certain direction and that and that is changed the object will resist that change in direction it will continue it will continue to move in that direction so one example will be that so when we rotate a string which has a stone tied to it in a circular motion so basically imagine this this is the string and this is the stone and we are rotating it we are swinging it in a circular direction in a circular motion so consider a situation when it as a when it is at a certain point we let go of it where will it move where will it go so basically in a circle let me draw okay. assume this is the path which is this one is taken and see that at this point we are moving and at this point we let go of it and note that we are 